Okay, here we are on a Saturday morning. We're getting ready to lower our 10K wind turbine. And we thought we'd talk you through the process of bringing it down. Now here's two of the engineers on the project. Their names are going to remain anonymous, but you can see they're very handsome uh, gentlemen. So uh, the gentleman on the right, we'll refer to him as Bill. And the guy on the left, we'll call him Tom. So, okay, Bill, uh, why don't you start with uh, what Tom's sitting on there and, and how we're going to take this down. Well, Tom's sitting on the hydraulic power unit that contains the oil, to, that hydraulic oil that goes into the single action cylinder. And the system's capable of five, four or 5,000 PSI, even though we only use about, oh, half that to two-thirds of it maybe in the lift. When we go to lower it, though, we really don't need the pump to do any of the lowering. We just use it for the valving because it's a one-way cylinder. And what we do is, if you look at the tower, you can see the hydraulic jack that's in the blue on the side. And all that does is that tips us over center. And then the big black cylinder, which is like similar to what's on a dump truck, that catches it after it gets over center a little bit. And then we just slowly let off, leave the pressure off to let the tower come on down onto the support systems on the end to do our maintenance. Now Bill, I see that it's extended and already attached to the tower. Uh, is this how it remains or is this something that uh, you have to bring out and put on? Well, you could leave it on, but our intentions are, and, and as we have in the past, is we take the cylinder off and store it in an environmental friendly place so it isn't exposed to the weather during the period of the year between maintenance systems that it's up. And uh, I think that gives you a lot better cylinder protection, cylinder life, than leaving it on all the time. But there's no point. It has no structural bearing on the operation of it, so there's no need to leave it sit out on the tower while it's not needed. Okay, and Tom, how long a process is this? Generally takes around an hour. There's a series of large bolts on the hinged flange part that you've got to remove, and then the tower's at that point free to hinge down based on the hydraulics. What size are those bolts? Oh, inch and a quarter or something like that. Pretty big. And I noticed that there are, are uh, pins here that it, it will pivot on. So basically we're ready to uh, lower the tower hydraulically. Uh, all the pins are disconnected. The tower is basically being held up by uh, this hydraulic system at this point. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, let's go around here to where we're actually going to get it started coming down, which is this jack system that we have. And uh, tell us about that, Tom. It just bears on that welded on part down below the fixed portion of the tower. And then the moving ram bears on that little tab that's welded onto the upper moving part of the tower. And it upsets the balance point just a little bit. It provides force is all. And once the tower's top, which is 80 feet up, gets past its center of gravity, then the weight transfers through the hinge pin to the long hydraulic cylinder and it carries all the load so the small jack just upsets the balance point. So how tall is this tower? I think it was it was 80 feet roughly. I can't remember now. So the next step in the process is to uh, start the pump or I guess do the jacking and then start the pump and bring the tower down. Is that correct, gentlemen? Yep. All right, we will document that as we go. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Tom. Okay. There's no you can start on. to see the gap coming on in here. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you what. Are you, are you, got, are you bleeding it? I'm bleeding it a little. Okay, leave it, leave it tight okay. a second until I see how much jacks, because I don't know how much air we're going to have to deal with. So don't push on it. Okay, stop there. just a minute, gentlemen. I'm going to go out where I can get a nice long look at it here. I'm not. I'm <laughs> And the rest of it is just a nice, gentle lower to the ground. And down it comes. And we'll come back around here. And once the air is out of the hydraulic system, which is we're going to have to work on that, you can see it's a nice gym lower to the ground. And here it comes. And let's see her in on up there. And we will position it on these. Uh, we have the turbine down and we're actually
taking the uh, the hub off, and you see how we're taking those bolts off. We've already taken the uh, the blades out, and the highly trained expert engineer team is uh, trying to break their old record of disassembly. We're actually took that off to take a look at the uh, what did you call them, Tom? The brushes. And how were the brushes? They were excellent. After a little over a year, there was insignificant wear on them. Great. Okay, we're going to take a close-up video here of all the blades. This one has a serial number on it. We'll get this. So we're going to send it up to Manny. There's 9111. And general condition of the blade. There's a couple of uh, exposed rings here. Getting a little bit too close here. There. And we're going to put some silicone on that when we get done. As you go on down the blade, same scenario right there too. So that's that blade. There we go. That's the second blade. And we'll go get the rest of the uh, stuff on the back here. They all have lost their silicone, haven't they? No, this one here still got it. No, it's I missing got, too. Well, I got that one already, but there was one down here that came off on the other blade. Um, and we're good on this one. Okay. Here's our third blade. Number one. And we'll go down and take a look at, at it. Now it's worn. All of them have lost uh, this portion right here. And then here's another one that has this thing missing here. We will uh, re silicone that when we get ready to put it back up. Got the new turbine head installed. Tom has it all wired up, checked all the phases on it, documented the uh, blade conditions as far as the parts where the silicon had popped off. We then he had retouched them up. That covers a, like, a little end of where the spring is, and we feel that that's there just to keep the water from getting out of the get the water getting on the inside of the blade. But we didn't build the blade, so we're not sure exactly its purpose, that, but just that it should be sealed. Uh, Tom has measured the uh, existing current brush length on the top of the rotor clip ring part so that we got uh, documentation on wear and tear the next time it would come down. Uh, well, kind of some dummy bolts into, into extra holes around the system. We had 12 holes bolts holding it on. The new system only required three, so we put nine dummy bolts in with silicone to, and filled the holes so that they would keep the water out. And that's basically it. Now we're just kind of getting regrouped here for the to raise it back up into position. We are ready to start the uh, reinstallation of the wind turbine, and up we go. Ryan, check with Tom and see if we're okay. Say, are you okay, Tom? You okay, Tom? Roger, she's on the way up. Say, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, the whole process takes about five minutes, and uh, we have a beautiful, calm day right now, so you ought to run right up. You can see a little vibration in the, in the turbine. And we have Loctited everything and put her up, and really the tough part of the whole lift is in this first 10 feet, because after the uh, turbine is just off the ground, the actual pressure on the uh, on the hydraulic system goes way down. So we'll see if we can zero in on this here and watch it, uh, Bill and Tom there. We're back here on the end now, and we're looking at the horizontal view of it coming up. We're going to be catching it with that jack right there when we get near the end. We'll actually zero in on that process as we go. And let's come up here and take a look at the pump. How many pounds of pressure we have. About 1,200 and we're getting ready to finish the second stage full extension here in another 30 seconds. 
fluctuating, Tom. Does that mean anything? Just the weight of the tower bouncing a little. Okay, we're back out again here. Come on, Ryan. Come with Grandpa. I got all my stuff off the golf cart here. Well, I was thinking we had I was thinking we had something here just Okay, there it is up there. Yeah. And it's coming up real good. Now let's catch it as it uh, continues up towards vertical. Now they've stopped it in place here for a second. There's a look at the cylinder. It's getting ready to extend into the third stage. And Bill is going to catch it with a block when he gets up there so that we, we can kind of lower it down nice and easy as we get it. That way we can put a little pressure on it with the cylinder. This is the, when it goes over top dead center, it will uh, stay over top dead center. And so we'll catch it with these blocks. This is the, the if there is a tricky part to this whole thing, this, this is it right here. And when we bury it in these blocks, watch this part of it here, nice and eat close. This allows us to lower it down on our terms. And Bill's about to catch it now with the, with the bottle jack. Put another block in there for safety. And Tom is just going to kind of nestle it in there until he gets it, until we have the, all the pressure on our bottle jack. All right, he's uh, letting the pressure off as he goes here. Once it gets okay, he's just about got it all now. Looks like you got it, Bill. Not quite. This really will keep it from slamming down on the base. I feel the pressure. You should have it, Bill. And there it is. And she's top dead center, and we have lowered the tower. Here's Dennis collapsing the single action cylinder. He'd never get it done if he didn't have his helper there. That's right. Talk to him, probably. I'll tell him how you learned how to do this. Bro! Watch it Bro. learn! Watch, watch and learn! Get louder! Watch and learn! Alright.